Hi, everybody. It is March 25, 2021. Outbreak of tornadoes again. Oh, Alabama again. Not just Alabama, but Alabama hit hard again. We had an outbreak of tornadoes eight days ago. You listen to these meteorologists, and every now and then you get that gem where they say, well, this is very rare to have an outbreak of tornadoes eight days apart. I have a global warming climate change nonsense playlist. Hope you come over and take a look at it. This is not global warming climate change that is causing our severe weather. It is not climate change or global warming that caused the massive flooding in Australia or Brazil, Colombia, uh, Indonesia, Italy, Spain, the whole lot of countries. You know, I, I put together a compilation of scientists speaking the truth regarding global warming. Fraud data manipulation, not science. So I just want to play you know, a, a little bit of Gary, Carrie Mullis, and a few others. Carrie Mullis, who now is unfortunately gone, he died October, Nobel laureate. Carrie Mullis is the man who discovered, created, developed the PCR test that they are using to diagnose the coronavirus, COVID-19. And yes, was he taken out just prior to the pandemic, the use of his test? Because I believe that Carrie would be speaking out. Why are they using this PCR test that I developed when it can't diagnose specific viruses? Why are they using it in a, in a manner that produces so many false positives? Well, he also gave a talk and he spoke on climate change. So I just want you to listen to him. Global warming. This is one of those cool things where there is not a thread of evidence. And I'm, I'm, I'm not lying to you. The CO2 has such a tiny effect. Even the CO2 that's there, the bulk of which isn't our problem, it just, it's always there. You know, and, and, the, and the guys that are now running that, like the people that got in trouble with Hadley Center, it, which is a, a uni like the University of East Anglia in England that got their, their emails all published and some of them were kind of embarrassing. But those guys, they're like computer jocks. They're not climatologists. And climatology has become a kind of a joke. The people that are real climatologists do think about things like the, all the, the global epochs that the Earth has gone through in our way of looking at it. But the, the guys that are getting the headlines and stuff and that are meeting in Copenhagen and deciding that everybody's got to stop cooking over sterno stoves in Africa or whatever, I mean, those people don't know nothing. They really don't. And, and if you read it, it's boring. It's clearly not made for you to understand. They have so many acronyms in the papers, like in Science and Nature. You know, every time they use a, a, a phrase, they immediately reduce it to a four letters or whatever, and it makes it hard for a non-specialist to understand what they're talking about. You have to go back and forth and back and forth. What the hell does this stand for? What does this mean? Why don't they just write it? Ink is not that expensive. And it's just, it, it makes it hard for someone who's a non-specialist to really understand what those things are. And this is in, in, in magazines like Science and Nature that are really written, supposedly, for the non-specialist, scientifically trained person. And in my opinion, all that stuff should get out of there. It makes them talk to themselves, basically, rather than to other people. And, and then they start having these big, you know, then they talk to people like Al Gore and say, hey Al, here's a great way for you to make money now that you're not the vice president. And, 
And they're all doing it in, you know, like it's for the earth. Save the earth from people or something. I'm not sure what it is. I know I'm not causing climate change. I mean, when I'm riding my bicycle, I'm blowing out a little CO2. But, and there's probably somebody with a satellite watching me. You know, the IPCC is always checking you out. And they're, they're going to say, you're polluting. And I'm just breathing. <laughs>
I'm posting on this again is because it's either the pandemic or climate change that will keep us imprisoned by government officials, keep the mainstream media lying, and I don't know if you've noticed, but the protests, Extinction Rebellion, having protests uh, in different countries, Greta is back on stage. In fact, we're, I think it's in England, oh my God, a life-size statue of Greta uh, Thunberg. Are you kidding so we're pulling down all of the statues, I believe, in, in London or England, pulling down Winston Churchill, which, look, I, I have issues with Churchill, but w- replacing them with Greta. Oh, Jesus. All right. Okay. When you know that there's an awful lot of scientists who dispute this climate change narrative— when you know that the IPCC is a governmental panel, not scientific, and when you hear so many scientists say that the IPCC, their assessments, are worthy of the nearest trash can, then you know that someone is lying And how do you discern which ones are lying and which ones are telling the truth? You've got to do your own research. So um, you can't just – it is the height of stupidity to just simply go along with one side – when you haven't checked out the other side and you haven't listened, you know, oh, but those who are still believing this climate change uh, lie, do you realize that you are complicit with the destruction that is taking place? When you see the severe weather that is taking place and you want to claim that it's climate change because that's what mainstream media is telling you that's what the Democratic Party is telling you that's what the IPCC is telling you and that's where you stop you won't listen to other scientists who have come out strongly disputing those assessments coming from the IPCC, you are absolutely complicit with the consequences of the lie. So just consider for a moment, it's not CO2, and it's not a pollutant. CO2, we need more of it. CO2 is, wow, plants and trees, they love it. They grow And we need more of it. You you can't just roll your eyes at somebody and claim that they're just crazy if you haven't checked out the claims that they make. So, considering for a moment all the people who are claiming that, hmm, Those who are claiming that this is all, you know, climate change, we're going to have more and more severe weather, more flooding, more tornadoes, uh, more of everything because of climate change. What if it's not? What if the whole climate change thing, they're wrong? Then what is all of this severe weather Where is it coming from? What's going on? All of the massive flooding that takes place all over the world every single day now. 
massive, massive destruction taking place with the flooding, the tornadoes. Where could all of this be coming from? Well, then you have to check out weather modification. Things like, I don't know, patents, hurricane and tornado control device. A method is disclosed for affecting the formation and or direction of a low atmospheric weather system. Audio generators are positioned to project sound waves, electromagnetic frequencies, toward a peripheral area of a weather system. The sound waves are generated at a frequency to affect the formation of the weather system in a manner to disrupt, enhance, or direct the formation. The sound waves can also be projected in a manner to cause the system to produce rain. Electromagnetic frequencies, which I have been showing for 10 years, in these weather systems that, if it was natural, you would not see those signatures, which I will show you in a moment. But we also have weather modification by artificial satellites. Okay, and what, what is this about? Well, artificial satellites emit electromagnetic frequencies. And let's just go, I did a search of the word tornado. Hmm, let's see. Wow. So, with these artificial satellites emitting electromagnetic frequencies, they can move two air masses in opposite directions, or in the same direction, but at different speeds. These air masses are offset by a small distance. This process will create a whirlwind or a small tornado. The movement of one of the air masses can be due to natural causes. However, you can get causes of a desired effect via this method, and they literally in this patent go into, you know, the types of frequencies, the power of the frequency in order to create the whirlwind or tornado. And the strength can be increased or decreased by combining and colliding many smaller whirlwinds rotating in the same direction thus creating a stronger or weaker whirlwind. Ha! Huh. Could that be what we are seeing with these tornado outbreaks? Yes. Yes, it can be. And the tornadoes, Alabama. This is the Atlanta area. Look at the size of this tornado, and, well, I'll, here, it's hard to see because it's dark and the rain on the windshield, but. Ooh. Ooh. Looks like it's going from right to left to me. Yeah, it's moving over to the uh, bridge, bro. Yeah, Mac Daddy got scared, huh? Yeah, they know. it's moving closer, though. It's because of the windows. Close. No, huh? Yes, please. Tornadoes used to be narrow, and when they hit land, they didn't go on and on and on for miles. Look at the size of this. I'm sorry, this is a manufactured tornado. 
that with electromagnetic frequencies, well, you got to check out what these frequencies can do. They can be used for good or evil. Unfortunately, that's what they're using them for, evil. So, the, the, how many tornadoes today? So many different towns were hit with tornadoes in Alabama alone. Lots of houses destroyed. Five deaths. Many injured. And there are missing people. You know... The size of these alone begs questions. So, lots of destruction, once again. And you can check out, there's so many videos on these tornadoes just today. Um, This is a, well, I thought it was a live broadcast, but severe weather moving across into Georgia. It's supposed to weaken when it gets to the Carolinas, but Tennessee, um, there are so many warnings. And they're warning right into the early hours of the morning. You know, Huge tornado crosses highway in Alabama. This is Calera, Alabama, and that is a tornado, and it is a mighty big one, as you see. This is just not a view that you even want to see, and what makes it more disturbing is watching this drone footage of it slowly moving towards I-65 and then crossing while there is still oncoming traffic. And some cars slowed down and stopped, but others drove through. It doesn't look like any of those cars were moved or shaken, but there was damage as this came through. Trees were snapped, and there were structures, including homes, that were badly damaged, and along the way, Transformers are blowing. That's what all those flashes are. A tornado emergency was issued for Calera shortly before 6 p.m. local time Thursday. The storm was estimated to be moving at 50 miles per hour. Again, although from this view, it looks like it's an agonizing slow crawl. People. I'm sorry. This is a manufactured tornado. This. Have you noticed? And I certainly have. When I was living in South Carolina, there were times when I'd be walking at the track, and those clouds were so friggin' low. This looks like our, they're just sucking this cloud down. And remember, with electromagnetic frequencies, they can cause, you know, those high winds, they can cause whirlwinds, they can put a couple of whirlwinds together, create a tornado, and they can weaken it or make it more intense. So, just want to say James Spann, who's a meteorologist in, I believe, Atlanta, he was covering the tornadoes. And then somebody else took over for him because James Spann, his house, got hit. What has James Spann said in the past? Billions of dollars of grant money are flowing into the pockets of those on the man-made global warming bandwagon. No global warming, the money dries up. This is big money, make no mistake about it. Always follow the money trail, and it tells a story. 
So James Spann, who understands that this global warming, it, it's, it's just an utter, it, it's utter nonsense. But he continues to be a meteorologist. And I don't think he talks about weather modification. And I don't think he says, uh, the climate change, you know, it's a business. It's, it's, it's about making money. I don't think that he brings that up when he's giving his reports. Shelby County, Alabama got hit. Homes. No, it's, but as you can see, this home got hit and it looks like the other homes around it are fine. That seems weird to me. Just one home. Well, here's mainstream media reporting on all of the damage. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Thursday night. President Biden making news tonight on several fronts. His first formal news conference, the pandemic, the southern border. Will he run in 2024? But we're going to begin tonight with what's believed to be a deadly emergency playing out right now. A tornado outbreak across several states as we come on the air. The National Weather Service warning tonight of a particularly dangerous situation in at least four states already. A number of tornadoes reported. There are reports of fatalities. The images of the damage coming in, a long track and violent supercell ripping across Alabama and right through this Birmingham neighborhood. People there trapped in their homes. The stunning damage seen from above, shattered homes, trees split open, ripped right from the ground. This Birmingham home destroyed, vehicles in the driveway crushed. No one was hurt at this particular home. But as I mentioned, reports of deaths and multiple injuries elsewhere. And take a look at the radar at this hour. The severe weather zone stretching from the Gulf Coast, across the south, and right up into Indiana and Illinois tonight. Authorities are warning of a dangerous night ahead. The scene left behind in Birmingham already devastating. ABC's chief meteorologist, Ginger Z, leading us off. She's in Birmingham tonight. Tonight, deadly tornadoes slamming the southeast. Multiple people injured in Alabama and at least five dead in Calhoun County. One of the main monster tornadoes ripping across the densely populated south side of Birmingham. And understand this is a very dangerous uh, situation and the weather service in Birmingham is now calling this a tornado emergency. In Pelham, the twister flinging debris into the air. This is a large, violent tornado that is down. First responders racing to help those trapped. These are those raw moments where we show up and this tornado just went through. Uh, the fire and police just got the folks that were in this home out. They are alive. They went to the hospital. But there are homes with their roofs off, their homes collapsed, and this is just one of the neighborhoods that was impacted. The folks who were sent to the hospital back at the scene. Mary Rose de Armin talking to us just hours after she and her husband Larry were pulled from their basement. Your spirits are, are pretty great for just coming from the hospital from being trapped in your home. Oh, I'm not worried about this. The only thing I was worried about, we came out of it alive. Before the next round of tornadoes, they were in there salvaging anything they could find. Just unbelievable pictures. Let's get right to Ginger Z. She's live on the scene in Birmingham, Alabama tonight. And Ginger, I know you have damage right there behind you and all around. And also that this is far from over. Show us what you're seeing. By the way, that meteorologist that you heard, that's James Spann, I believe. James Spann, right here. How could you know the truth and continue reporting on these severe weather events when you know it's not climate change and you don't say anything the storm blew through this afternoon and showed no mercy. Let me show you some of this damage here. The roof is ripped off of this home and the wall collapsed into the neighbor's house. This home also has significant damage to the roof, but also you can see the storm punched through the garage door. The woman who lives here told us that she hid in her bathtub and prayed because this is the second time in 10 days that a major storm has blown through this area. The series of damaging tornadoes sent sparks and debris flying across northern Alabama. 
the deadly storms reportedly trapping people in their homes. Powerful winds uprooted trees and sent them crashing onto rooftops or flattening them on their foundations. Some of the worst damage happened here at the Eagle Point subdivision in Shelby County, Alabama. It was scary. The noise was unbelievable. Carol Willis's garage damaged, but her home was mostly spared. She described the frightening moments the tornado barreled through her community. I was standing in this window, the bedroom window, and I looked out and it started getting dark. I said, well, I better get out of this room. And I had a metal garbage can. I said, well, let me run to my utility room. I put the garbage can over my head, went in there. I, st I stayed no more than two minutes. And I came out and I saw all of this. I couldn't believe it. It went so fast. Also hard hit, Pelham, Alabama, just 20 miles south of Birmingham. At least 14,000 people in the area without power. First responders have been going door to door to check on people. You can tell by the markings here. Good news is there's no fatalities here, but there were at least three fatalities in Calhoun County. Now it's five. So there are plenty of videos. Plenty of videos on this. Tornado in Vietnam. I didn't realize that Vietnam got tornadoes. Turkey, look at this thing. Look at this thing. Look how squared off it is. The right angled hit. This this tornadic supercell in Turkey. <laughs> Looks like they're creating a whirlwind. Hell. Wow, baseball size, golf ball size, hell. All right, you know, oh, wow. Nashville, widespread damaged property and neighborhoods. Many people without power. Hail, high winds made their way eastward through metro residents across Nashville, reporting trees uprooted, fallen power lines, Home damage, 15,000 without power. Nashville, house blown off foundation. House blown off foundation after powerful storm hits Middle Tennessee. Fast moving thunderstorms have left thousands of people without power in Nashville Thursday evening. A thunderstorm moving up to 80 miles per hour brought hail, strong winds and tree damage as it towered through the mid-state. Nashville Fire Department crews reported a home Fairfield Avenue in Cannon Street was blown off its foundation by the storms. Search dogs were on the scene to make sure no one was trapped inside. In East Nashville, a historic home undergoing renovations collapsed. Nashville Electric Service reported more than 11,400 households were without power as of 5 p.m. Thursday. In Williamson County, about 1,500 homes lost power in the storm, Middle Tennessee Electric reported. People posted on social media images of golf ball-sized hail, downed trees and reports of damaged power lines. Nashville firefighters were responding to multiple reports of downed trees across the city Thursday evening. And it's not going to end. I mean, th these storms continue on. Let's just check out radar. And, yeah, I took a lot of captures and the frequencies in use. Well, wow. This looks very different than it did just a few hours ago. But look at the, how thin the precipitation is. These lines of, of storms. This is not what weather fronts looked like. So let me just show you a capture 
earlier. I mean, I could go back to the 22nd and you just watch this storm begin. The spin. Ah, yes. The hurricane spin inland. Really? Okay, look at all of these severe storms in Texas being developed. And you can see the frequencies. You can see the frequencies right there. Uh, the frequency hits and then suddenly you see severe storms. They develop as severe. Look at this. And a line of them. A nice line. You know, that's uh, on the 22nd at um, 9.55 p.m. The uh, But the spinning of this, I mean, it just went on for days, for days. And you can watch them literally expand the storms. Now, we didn't get these spinning weather fronts This is a hurricane. You know, I so can't stand how many people are having to suffer the consequences of this. Here again, this is the 23rd at 11.02 a.m. Mountain Time. Look at these storms going through Louisiana, Mississippi, but it's still spinning around. And look at these intense pulses up here in Iowa. You know, precipitation there? Gone. Precipitation? Gone. You, you look at the cloud formations that are manufactured, and it look, you have another spinning right outside the Carolinas in the Atlantic. It's unbelievably ridiculous what we are seeing. And we see it now 24 seven. Um, but I'll take you, it just continued to spin, you know, spinning, 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 but let's go to the uh, at 236, which means that it was, I guess, uh, 336 or maybe 436 today. But it got more intense. But And these little blips of precipitation that you see being manufactured, I do believe it's nanotechnology. Look at the frequencies that are hitting this weather front, moving it eastward. All of the Doppler radar emitting frequencies, the high frequency heating of the ionosphere. You know, it's only going to get worse. <laughs> Look at this hook of uh, the precipitation here in Alabama. It's just unbelievable how this just persists and you still can't get people to even consider that it might not be climate change and it might be man 
controlling the weather. You can see the air mass is going in different directions. You can see the enhancement of the cloud in a line. Look at the lined up cloud down here in the Gulf. Mother Nature did not create these defined lined clouds. They're manufactured. What, you know, look at this going in different directions. Again, we're seeing the manufacturing of destructive weather. All of these white little blips that just appear, you know, and, and they're, you can see more and more of them. They're filling out an area. Nanobots. You can take a look at my weather modification playlist, and I have several videos regarding nanotechnology and how they are using nanotechnology to create weather. Look at all of the microwaves in play. Look at this. The massive amounts of electromagnetic frequencies, yes, are quite intense. Man, oh man, oh man. Now, do you see the circular pattern? That's perfect. It's a perfect circular pattern. Doppler radar emitting high frequencies. The straight lines, extremely low frequencies. They are controlling, intensifying, steering this manufactured weather front. And a whole lot of people paid the price. If that doesn't piss you off, I don't know, but massive amounts of high frequency in this sawtooth frequency. I mean, it's so obvious. It's so friggin' obvious. That's what drives me crazy. You know, you can't get through to people when things are so obvious. Look at this thing. It's, oh. The right angled cut of a cloud, please. Spare me. Look at this. You, you can see the cut out. The, uh, what we used to refer to as harp rings. The circular pattern, the high frequency from Doppler radar, shooting off all over the place and literally creating just empty space. But when you see a right-angled, perfect cut of a cloud, you know it's manufactured. It's manufactured. So we have a whole lot of people who are not living in their homes tonight because they have been destroyed. A whole lot of people who are suffering the loss of a loved one who died in these tornadoes. This is murder. This is murder. Look at this. Oh, my God. So when you see these perfect circular patterns and perfectly straight lines, that's man's hand in these storms. 
I will link below to the patents, the video compilation of scientists who dispute the global warming claim, the climate change claim, and a few of the other videos. But man, this is a this is every single day now every friggin' day and look at all of these frequencies in play. Jesus. Well. Oh. I do have subscribers who live in this area. I really hope that all of you are okay, safe, and will be safe because you know, North Georgia tonight, North Georgia, severe weather and tornado warnings. Be on alert, guys. Just stay, stay alert. <laughs>